Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer, a dating and makeover expert, where I will help you build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. What is preventing you from finding love? Have you ever thought about that? I don't think I've ever asked you. (laughs) It's such an obvious question, right? And and a lot of times we get caught up in the minutia of the details of online dating and our dress and our style and the inner and the outer and all that. But have you really thought about what is preventing you from finding love? And this is what, it's a funny thing because Every time I will talk to a potential client, right, for the first time and I'm getting their history and understanding, you know, where they come from, when I ask them this question, nine times out of ten, they usually tell me it's because of things outside of themselves. There are external reasons, meaning, well, it's the town I live in. Well, it's the men. Well, it's the women. And believe me, there is no gender difference here guys, because both men and women complain about each other or blame each other. There's no good men. There's no good women. Um, They blame the age. They blame, you know, everything under the sun. Until I ask the question, well, I, I get that. And there may be some truth to that. But besides the things swirling around you, what are you doing that's attracting or not attracting something in your life, right? And and there's usually a big pause. And then when we kind of peel away the layers, we get to it. But here's the truth. And I want you all to get a piece of paper and pencil because there's some juicy things that we're going to talk about today. The only one who is preventing you from finding love is you. It's you. We are always 50% of the equation, right? I'm not talking about the other 50%, but we can't change anything outside of ourselves. We can't change often maybe the town that we live in or the guys or the girls, but we have to look at within ourselves of what we're doing to detract love or whatever it is that we want in our life. And this could be, I mean, this could pertain to a lot of things, right? It could pertain to um, a lack of abundance, a lack of, um, of the career that you want, I know firsthand that this was true for me. I mean, I often tell you all about the story of me being that divorcee with the oversized black shirts and the baggy pants and the Birkenstock sandals. And I know I tell this over and over again, but, you know, here's the thing. When I look back, I realized that I was literally using my clothes to camouflage me from the world and it protected me from getting the attention that I feared. That was one of the ways that I was preventing me from finding love. And it was all fear-based, right? I was literally hiding in my clothes. It served as almost armor. I mean, we all carry armor. The clothes was a metaphor for that and a, a physical metaphor, if you will. But there came a time that I was just tired. I was tired of not being seen and missing opportunities in my life. And when I hit rock bottom and I got out of bed that moment, I realized I got to change. It wasn't until I got that red dress and changed my attitude and was more proactive and becoming more social that I started gaining that confidence. And yes, I started attracting love and not just love, you know, from men, but really self-love. It was the first time I kind of like fell back in love with myself. I know that sounds kind of strange, but it was like a rediscovery time. So this is what I want to get into today. You know, what is preventing you from finding love? And I extracted the top five reasons that I see over and over again that are very common. Now, there are a lot more, right? And obviously, you know, I have to know you and you specifically to really uncover, you know, the the true essence of what's going on. But in general, I find that these are very common. All right. So hopefully you guys all have a piece of paper. The first one, it's you're not leaving the house. And I mean this mentally and physically. Like you're you're stuck in your cozy cocoon. You are not leaving your house. 
and you're not going on enough dates and meeting men. And what the symptoms are, like what that looks like is that either you're busy doing work, right? Like you're wrapping yourself into work. You go back home and you're eating ice cream in front of the TV. And it just seems so much nicer than actually getting out there, right? You're There's not a lot of social activities that you're involved in. Or maybe you've tried the online thing and you're so burnt out that you've totally turned off everything, you know, online and offline. And so what's happening is that your social and dating muscles are literally getting atrophied. I mean, that muscle, the, the social muscle can, can lose its, you know, strength over time because if you don't do it, then it feels hard. It feels scary. And then you don't do it even more. And then you go in that vicious cycle. It's like that loop that you get caught in. And then you're stuck feeling lonely and hopeless. And here's the thing, you know, gone are the days of college. I mean, you know, if you're listening to this and you're not of college age, and I know a lot of you are not still in college, you don't have the infrastructure anymore that had that built-in social life for you, right? I mean, that was one of the beautiful things about being in school. First of all, you were all, you know, within the similar age group. There were always activities and things going on, and everyone mostly was either single or dating people, but there was just a lot more opportunity. Well, as you get older, all of that goes away, so you have to really make a conscious effort in creating that for yourself. Um, I remember there was this woman that I was talking to, actually it was last week, and she was that woman who, honestly, and I don't think she's there yet, she's ready to get that help because I always kind of listen for that, but she's starting to, you know, she's 50 years old and she's very comfortable you know, in every aspect of her life except her dating life. So she's wrapped herself into her comfort zone and she's goes to work. She comes home. She takes care of her child. She maybe talks to a couple of friends on the phone and that is her life. And she says she's pretty happy, but yet there's still something missing. And when I asked her, well, you know, how do you want to meet people? And she's like, well, I really don't like the online dating thing. So I want to meet people organically. I said, great. So, okay. When you're out and about, um, what's preventing you from meeting people? She's like, oh, well, I don't really go out and about. I said, well, I thought you told me you want to meet people organically. She's like, I do. I said, well, how is that going to happen if you're not out there meeting people organically? Right. And so I think again, so many people, we get caught in that loop It's like we know what we want and how to get there, but yet we don't do it. And again, it's all fear. It's the fear of the unknown, the fear of doing it wrong, fear of being exposed, whatever that is. When I asked her how many dates she had been on in the last six months, she said two. I said, okay, are you happy with that number? She said, no. I said, so what what do you want to do in order to change that? She's like, nothing. So do you see, she was really, really stuck. And so that's, you know, what I would say to you right now is you really got to ask yourself, are you ready? Are you ready for something different? Are you ready to do something that makes you uncomfortable, that, that might be a little bit scary so that you can start taking action and start changing this aspect of your life? And if the answer is yes, then great you know, and we'll, and start small. But if the answer is no, then maybe you're not ready. And that's okay. I mean, just, you really have to get clear on your intention. Um, and so what you should do if you are ready, if you do say yes, I love doing this exercise. I think I've mentioned this before, but I want to highlight it again, is you can create that infrastructure that we once had in college by almost making up a social plan for yourself. Now, I break it down into three different categories. The first one is what I call one-offs. You know, everyone, you should do some research. I call it social research. And either you can Google online, start asking around people that you know, people who are really social, 
and see what's going on in your hometown. I mean, there are things all the time that are going on right under your nose you're probably not even aware of because you're not looking for it. So start looking for it. It's just like buying a new car, right? When you start looking for a new car, you see them on the road all the time. If it's the BMW that you want or if it's the Audi, right? Before, maybe you didn't see it. They were on the road before, but you didn't you didn't have that intention. So you got to have some intention. And, and it's fun. You know, if you start looking at the hobbies and the passions that you are into, see what's going on. And then once you find a couple events, put them on your calendar and hold yourself to it, just like a business meeting. The second category are classes. I love classes because it's, you know, something where you'll see the same people over and over again, and that's how you can build relationships. It could even be a fitness class. You ever notice that there's the similar people who go to the same classes over and over again, and that those are great ways of making connections. And the third category to building out your social plan is organic conversations. So it's like this woman that I was talking to, I told her one of the great ways of getting started next time you're at the market, smile, make eye contact and just say hi to somebody and start striking up, exercising that social muscle. This is a great place to start. Okay. So that first thing that's preventing you from finding love is you're not leaving your house. All right. Number two, You have a lot of fear and anxiety around dating, so you end up hiding. Now, this could be for many, many reasons. It could be maybe you've been single for a very long time and you grew up in a a, a culture or a household where dating just wasn't the thing. <laughs> and so you never really dated. And, and the older you get, the harder it becomes because it becomes just so scary, right? Because you have a lack of exposure, a lack of experience. The fear or anxiety around dating could be because like for me, you're coming out of a divorce or a long-term relationship and you haven't dated for a really long time. I usually find that, you know, anxiety is based on things that are unknown, right? Why are we anxious about something or why do we worry about something? It's because we don't know about something. But once we know it, the fear goes down, the anxiety goes down. So, you know, symptoms that you might see when when you have this is that you could be hiding in your clothes like I was. Um, You hide by being a better listener than sharer in a conversation. And I know that sounds strange. Let me explain. It's much easier when you are striking up a conversation with somebody If maybe they start the conversation and they do the talking, because if you just sit and listen, then they can talk about themselves and you don't have to expose yourself. And maybe it's because you're fearful that you're not good enough or you don't know enough, whatever that monkey chatter that goes on in your head. Um, It could look like you're hiding in public settings to blend in. Right. Like or maybe, you know, you go out with your girlfriends and you just kind of blend in in the corner. You don't put out any signals that you're approachable, (laughs) even though you may be in a room with a thousand guys or a thousand women. um, Go, you know, it may look like that you just don't go out a lot. It's it's just more comfortable being alone. Um, It also may look like you have very closed body language, like you avoid eye contact, your arms are closed, you slunch over. You know, there's a lot of ways that that can be played out from the outer and the inner. There was, um, gosh, I have, you know, when I was thinking about examples of this, I think this is one of the things that I find true with many, many women. Um, one particular one she shared with me that, gosh, the, the thought of dating was just daunting for her. And, you know, she was really, really smart, successful woman, very respected in her profession, But what we uncovered is that growing up, she had these really, really pretty sisters. And what was interesting is that her sisters got reinforced for their looks, right? They were the pretty girls. That's how kind of they got attention and love. Now, this particular client, she got attention for being the smart one, 
She was the tomboy. She was the intellect. And so for her, love was expressed by reinforcing her intellect, not her looks. So what did she do? She labeled herself as not the pretty one, that she's not really that sexy. And so, you know, fast forward to now, she has little to no dating experience. She only has a bunch of guy friends and coworkers. So she realized that that label of the smart one she was using as her shield, right? Because she feared the attention because she's like, she, she said quite just really blankly, Kim, if I got the attention right now, I, I literally don't know what I would do with it because I don't have, I, I haven't even kissed a guy. I, I don't even know what I would do if I got it. So I've been helping her a lot. I've been helping her a lot with just owning her femininity and embracing herself as a sexy woman and forgetting about the men right now. This is really about her because until she changes her mindset about how she is and who she is, no man's going to see her that way, right? And so it's starting to happen. I mean, gosh, every time I talk to her, she said that she she feels lighter and feminine and she's having her voice and she's loving being seen and people are noticing her at the office. And it's such a beautiful, beautiful thing. So that is what I want to tell you all to do. This is what you should do is practice, practice, practice. If this this part sounds like you. Don't worry about going on dates right now. That, and you know, a lot of times people get caught up. I've got to meet the one, I've got to meet the soulmate. And they get so caught up in that finish line that they forget to just, first of all, have some dates, practice. And, and here's the thing just be around like male energy or female energy if you're a man listening to this. Meeting the opposite sex until you feel more confident. And you can also practice this by being seen and wearing something that makes you more visible. It could be red lipstick. It could be a high heel. It could be a hat if you're a guy or something that kind of makes you stand out. Because then you and only then can you get used to being seen in that and 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 absorbing that, taking that in. So, and that is going to build your confidence because people are going to notice you. That's what happened to my client because she's like, Kim, I can't believe how many people have come up to me and said, gosh, you're looking good. And that just reinforces her. And you know what? What's so beautiful about her story is that the first time in her life, she's finally seeing that she is a pretty one, just like her sisters, you know? And so she is rewriting that story that she had for so long. All right. So that was number two. You know, you have a lot of fear and anxiety around dating, so you hide. Number three, the third reason that's preventing you from finding love is, drumroll, you are an over caretaker. <laughs> I know, I talk about this a lot, right? But it's true. You are neglecting your own needs and are, you're almost going at dating as, as reactive than proactive. So you're waiting to be approached. You're waiting to be set up. You're waiting for things to be safe or for a guy or for a girl to like you. And then you'll go out with them. And then maybe, you know, you fall into a relationship because you think, well, who else would? Or you are also giving your power away because you're not seeing yourself as valuable. So you just, you know, you kind of go with it. So the symptoms are like what you, what it looks like is that over time, again, you're getting into these lopsided relationships where it's more about the other person and not yourself. And then what happens to you is you start building resentment of the partner or the people that you're dating or even friendships because you're overwhelmed, you're overworked, you lack energy to date because everybody around you just sucks you dry. You do a lot of people-pleasing behavior and even the way you communicate and lo and behold, you get taken advantage of. I had a, I had a male client who really got caught up. Actually, I can think of a couple, but this one in particular, because it ended up in such a beautiful, beautiful ending. Um, he had been married to a woman who he remembers in the beginning, she really liked him more than he liked her, but 
he kind of got caught into that vortex of being liked. And he didn't think that there could be really maybe anyone else. And he got to be at that age and he wanted kids. So he, you know, he ended up being in the relationship and getting married. Well, fast forward 10 years later, they ended up in a divorce and he realized no longer did he want a woman to dictate you know, the relationship that he wanted to go after what he wanted. And so that's where I was helping him. I taught him to go after what he wanted, not just because a woman liked him, but because that's what he wanted. That's what he desired. It was, you know, kind of what he looked at his negotiables and non-negotiables. He's like, Kim, this is what I want in a woman. I said, then absolutely, you need to go and get it. But you know, that's easier said than done when you have been that caretaker and just focusing on other people for so long. So here's here's what I will tell you to get started, to get over that kind of syndrome is, you know, really pull in and make a pact to yourself that you're going to date without getting into a relationship. That's right. You're going to date without getting into a relationship and give yourself even a milestone. Like you say, okay, I'm going to do like three months of just pure dating. And I, and, and really, in essence, you're going to date yourself. You're going to get to know yourself better. Make a list of what you want in a relationship. And then as you're dating, you're going to place them into dating buckets. I teach my clients this all the time. So any of you listening get to hear my secret sauce on this. So the three buckets that you're going to put them into are this. Number one, who are potential relationship people? Who are like, after you go on the first or second date, wow, yeah, I could kind of see myself in that relationship. Those are the the dates that you may take a little more time with, that you really want to cultivate, pace it out, see where it goes. The second dating bucket is the fun bucket. <laughs> yes, I'm giving you permission, especially if you're an over caretaker, this is essential. You know, there's some people that you meet, you love them to death. They're fun. Maybe they're highly sexually charged, but you know they're not relationship people. Then put them in the fun bucket. Have fun. As long as you're upfront about what your intentions are and that you're wanting to have a little fun and you don't want to be in a relationship, they are agreeing to that. Then great. Do it. Have fun and date without guilt. Because those of you who are caught up in this are often feeling guilty, right? You know who I, if it's you that I'm talking to, you know what I'm talking about. I want you to learn to date without guilt because this is really crucial in setting a new precedent for yourself so that you get into healthier reciprocal relationships in the future. Okay. So that was number, what was that? Number three. Number four, the fourth reason that's preventing you from finding love is you are stuck in your head. You are doing the analysis paralysis. You're not having fun. And you, you're so much in your head that you're just forgetting how to be. You're, you're overanalyzing things to death. You, you may appear stiff. You're, um, you know, you're not moving forward in your body or action. Uh, you're very serious minded and you're so serious that maybe you're getting bored or you're not attracted to the guys. You have kind of more this like black and white thinking. So it's hard. And so dating feels so hard. <laughs> and these are the clients that I find that just get exhausted because they're spending so much energy in their head that it feels like work. Here's the thing. Dating should not feel like work. Dating should be fun. It should be light. It should be laughter, sharing stories. And you need to be more in your body. I would say 90% of my clients suffer from the syndrome. I'm not kidding. <laughs> um, there, I, I, I'll just, just quickly go over this one woman that comes to my mind. I mean, she was so caught up in the function of what everything I told her to do was like, 
you know, which sites and what time of day should she, you know, do the online sites. And she was combing through each profile and taking notes and studying statistics and putting the data in. She was reading a ton of books. She listened to every podcast under the sun. She could even recite a solution to every problem that was out there when it came to dating. But the problem was, is that that's where... (laughs) That's all she was doing is she was just reciting things. She was stuck in her intellect and she wasn't putting enough action to her words. So here's the thing. Love and connection does not happen in the head. It happens in the heart. And I know this sounds a little woo-woo and airy-fairy, but it's true. You know, it's how someone makes you feel and how you feel around them. It's not what you know. So practice dating without an agenda. Do something spontaneous that takes you out of that comfort zone or out of your scheduled life. Do improv. Go dancing. You know, this is more like exercising that right brain because if you're stuck in your head and you're, you know, overanalyzing things to death, that means you're very, very much a left brain person, which is probably why you're thriving in business, but not in your love life. Okay. And finally, you don't flirt. I know I have all my podcasts. I mentioned flirting, but I'm sorry. This is a really big one. You carry this busy masculine or friend zone energy. And so men aren't giving, getting the signals that you're interested in them as a sexual partner, but more as a business partner or a friend. So what does this look like? It could look like, you know, very close body language, stiff movements, wearing clothes that hide you. Um, Men don't feel attracted to you or women don't feel attracted to you. Um, And you could even have like a negative view if you're a woman around femininity. In fact, you probably define femininity as like dumbing down and you want the guy to like you for your intellect and not just your body, (laughs) you know? So there, there's a lot of, obviously, you know, when I work with clients, stories and things from the past that are associated with that, um, this one particular client, she wore a ton of masculine clothes and she had really harsh movements and she was into martial arts and she had these intense athletic, you know, kind of activities that she was doing. And she told me point blank, she's like, Kim, the thought of flirting is just maddening to me. Like, I just think it's stupid. I think when girls do that and get all giggly, they look, they look dumb and I'm not going to do that. And, you know, I'm not, a man is going to like me for me and not for, you know, how I'm like acting. And she had these associations around flirting that were really, I mean, what, you know, again, it was kind of because of the stuff that went on in the past and I won't go into it, but she had some things happen to her. And so it was no wonder she had her boxing gloves on, literally, is that she, again, was fearful of getting hurt. And so she was kind of having this, you know, more gruff type of, you know, personality and and rough around the edges, if you will, um, in her body language so that she wouldn't get hurt. So here's what you should do if you feel like you're getting caught up in that. Dress feminine practice, practice wearing a dress, practice, you know, doing the eye contact thing, practice smiling, be open to receiving, you know, it's, um, femininity is not about dumbing down. It's about being open to receive. It's about, you know, creating a magnetic energy where people are drawn to you so that you get to choose who you go on with. Look, if you're looking for a business partner and you're looking for a friend, then don't. Yeah, then don't flirt. That's fine. (laughs) But most of us, are when we're looking for love, we're looking for a sexual partner. And so there's got to be that sexual energy that that comes from you. And if that's hard for you or there's fear around it, definitely contact me because I want to help you with that. So hope that all makes sense. But I would say those are the top five. Again, you're not leaving the house. You have a lot of fear or anxiety around dating. dating. You are an over caretaker and you're giving your power away. You're stuck in your head and you don't flirt. 
I have um, a cute kind of funny letter that came in around this. I want to do um, one of my favorite parts of the show and read this for you. Hi, Kimberly. I am so sick of doing everything on my own. I feel so alone. I have my own business and I live alone. I am a pretty woman, but every guy I date ends in a disaster. In fact, the last guy I dated, we had such a heated altercation, the police were involved. And these men always end up telling me that I'm too emotional or even worse, they call me crazy. I'm a very feeling person and okay, I do cry a lot, but I am all about self-growth and healing myself. I'm just not sure how to attract a man who will truly love me and not leave me or think I'm friggin' crazy from Crazy Jen. Oh, Jen. Okay. I feel your pain. And it sounds like, you know, your relationships really have been filled with so much emotion and drama and it's just leaving you filled with loneliness and frustration. And I mean, and that can be exhausting. And and I see this happen a lot where then women get so negative around dating that anytime they go out uh, on a date, there's that negativity that just leaks from them. But here's the truth, Jen. We are all 50% of the equation. It's like I said in the beginning, we cannot change these guys who you keep attracting. Okay. The only thing you can do is look at you and understand what it is about what you are doing to attract these guys. And it sounds like, without knowing you, you are a little bit falling into that category of giving your power away and you're not expressing your needs and what you want in a relationship. And you're getting attracted to these guys who end up sucking you dry. And then because you're not direct in the first place, it's building up over time. And then boom, it just explodes. And then the drama happens. And then you get labeled crazy. So you also have to ask yourself, and and I'm really going to challenge you here, What do you like about these kind of relationships? Because obviously there's something about the drama or about these relationships that keeps you in it or keeps you keep getting attracted to these kind of guys. Like, what are you gaining from them? Is it a way for you to find love and attention? And if the answer is one of those or maybe an assemblance of one of those, are you ready to give that up? Because if you are great and, and the first time that you like kind of see it and have that awareness of it, it's, that is when you should do something about it because you can create something different for yourself. So here's what I suggest. Go on a dating fast and don't date anybody. Just work on falling in love with you. I think you really need to pull in and rediscover yourself. Get clarity in what it is that you want. I tell a lot of my clients to do this. You know, in business where you write a mission statement, write a mission statement for yourself. What is it that you want in your dating life right now? Do two or three sentences around that, okay? Then I want you to get involved in things that fill you up rather than relying on a man to do that for you. And what I mean by that, maybe it's like hobbies, maybe it's an exercise regimen, maybe it's putting yourself uh, on a healthy routine where you're doing things like pampering yourself and, and doing positive things for yourself. It could be meditation daily, it could be journaling. And, you know, from now on, I really want you to expect to date men after you're done with this fast that respect you and love all that you are rather than all that you're not. And finally, you really need to work on expressing your feelings to be direct and to not let that build up because the better you able are able to do that, people will... And I'm not just talking men, but like coworkers, friendships, you name it. Everybody is going to see where you're coming from. They're going to hear you. They're going to better respect you. And that buildup over time of all those emotions won't happen. So this is a great time for you to do this. If you really own it and you're aware of it, you got this. All right. There was this great quote, and I don't know who AL is, if anyone knows it. It's A. And then E-L-L-E, but I found it and it just, I think, wraps up everything what we're talking about today. Stop giving people the power to steal your peace. 
It belongs to you and no one should be able to run away with it. Thanks for joining me today. This has been the Charisma Quotient, and I am your host, Kim Seltzer. Remember, you can build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. And if you want to know what's preventing you from finding love, make sure that you contact me and sign up for a breakthrough session so I can figure out what is going on with you. And you'll see a link that is right there. Stay, and stay tuned till next week with more tips on how to look and feel fabulous every day. Mm-hmm.